우리는 조용히 살고 싶다. 돌아 노는 건 낙인 찍힌 해고와 배고픔. 몽둥이의 철창 신세뿐인 줄 빤히 알면서 소리치며 나설 자 누가 있겠느냐. 그대들은 우리 더러 노동 문제를 일으킨다 하지만 우리 돌처럼 풀처럼 조용히 살고 싶다. 다만 모래밭에 메마른 뿌리를 기름진 땅을 향해 뻗어 가야겠다. 우리도 봄날엔 소박한 꽃과 향기를 피우고 싶다. 우리로 하여금 소리치게 하고 돌사태를 일으키게 하는 것은 바람이 드세게 몰아쳐 더 이상 견디지 못하기 때문이다. The point about dawn is that it brings new hope. The book echoes voices full of anguish, yet they continue to aspire to lives that are human. Park n o h e had to go to prison and realize that the workers' struggle had been a failure before discovering that the human is the source of hope and sharing the secret of true living. Park n o h e was born in 1957 in Hampyeong, South Jolla Province. His original name was Park Gi Pyeong. While working as a laborer in various factories in his 20s, he began to reflect and write poems on the sufferings of the laboring class. He then took the pseudonym Park n o h e No meaning labor, h e meaning liberation, and then published his first collection of poems, Nodong Es Hebyok, Dawn of Labor, in 1984. Korea was at that time under the military dictatorship of Chan Doo-hun, with strict censorship. Despite official bans, this collection sold nearly a million copies and created intense interest. The unknown poet became a symbolic figure of resistance. The government authorities tried in vain to identify and arrest him. For seven years, he was active underground, helping establish the South Korean Socialist Workers Alliance in 1989. Finally arrested in 1991, after 24 days of investigation coupled with cruel illegal torture, the prosecution demanded the death penalty for the leader of an anti-state organization. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. I work at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Manoa is a neighborhood in, in the city of Honolulu, so it's not a separate city. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a neighborhood, yep. and that's where the main university is. And I'm in the uh, history department there. I'm an associate professor. And I, uh, I handle modern Korea, um, but my research is mainly on North Korea, labor history, mm-hmm. um, urban history, architecture, everyday life, um, but in general, socialism in East Asia. Mm. Yeah. Genuine pleasure to have you here because I think you're the perfect guest and you are the co-translator. That's right. Uh, yeah. Of the, the first English version of this. So happy. Yeah. So happy about that. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. it's amazing that finally it took this long preparing for this. I was searching for Park Noh e stuff online and in English there's, yes. there's very little. Yes, that is true. You know, bits and pieces in the past um, mm. 20, 30 years. They have been released to the world. Individual scholars translating, you know, um, uh, in their own ways. Yeah. You know, because these poems are so powerful. Mm. So, so a handful of poems have been known in the um, non-Korean speaking world. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, s- someone like you, you've yeah. you've uh, loved his poems for yeah. for a, for a long time, and you probably have also translated them and probably share them to your students or or something like that. So I, I use Brother Anthony's translation. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yes. There we go. He's he's yeah. done a few. So. Yeah. But this is the first time when the entire collection is out. Yeah. And um, this is a true collaboration. So Brother Anthony and I, An San Je Gyo Sunim and I translated. Mm. And then everything was thoroughly combed over with p a n g n o e s team wow. um, here in, um, in Seoul. He, he usually does not appear in the public much. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, he, he should be... He should be the one here, right? Yeah. 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 He, he does not make public appearances. And he hasn't given an interview, I believe, in more than 10 years. Wow. 10 years. Yeah. Um, but um, so, so this is the first time when three different um, perspectives. p a n g n o s team, mm-hmm. that's the most important source. And, of yeah. course, the master translator, master literary scholar, Brother Anthony. Mm-hmm. And then I, um, a historian. Uh, who knows the context yep. um, and who's um, also um, involved in the publishing side mm-hmm. in North America. Yeah. Uh, so it was a collaboration between the three. Brilliant. A yeah. perfect dream team. I must say that Park n o h e and his team, they do put stuff out on Insta and Twitter 
you know very this. regularly. I, yes. f- I follow them, and it's in uh, Korean and in English. Yeah. And they're beautiful pictures. We've just, it's almost like a, I don't know, a, a daily blessing or something yes, like it that. Is. It feels like that. These little aphorisms and phrases about, about life. Yes. And, uh, so the social media content is there, which is very interesting to see. Yeah. So, Pang Noe, the poet, and his team, um, they are a complete independent. Um, entity. So they do their marketing, they mm. do their publishing. Mm. Um, his foundation um, publishes all of his books through a publisher called Nudin Garum Slow Walking. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they also handle uh, social media. Wow. And daily he puts out these observations. Yeah. Um, and sometimes these are new creations, mm-hmm. and, some are, and sometimes these are old excerpts. Yeah. Um, you know, but he, he communicates. Um, to the society in this kind of uh, very um, uh, uh, digital space, Mm. surprisingly, right? But he himself is um, kind of a recluse Mm. and he lives in a a countryside Mm. um, between uh, Jeollado and Gyeongsangdo in a a mountain village and um, he does farm work himself. He burns um, wood to heat his house. I mean, you know, he wow. he does live in a modern life, mm. but he he maintains this kind of a um, kind of a um, um, a life that that it, that involves working with uh, with your hands. Mm. Um, but he's he's also very keen on the digital world. Mm. So he communicates using Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, uh, he's also a photographer, um, so he 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 uses various mediums mm-hmm. to um, to communicate. Yeah, absolutely. His photography is amazing. Yeah, he sounds a bit like you, Jiwon. He <laughs> takes photographs <laughs> and he communicates. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it, it's good that he he walks the walk and talks the talk. I mean, it, it feels like. Yeah. W- with this pseudonym, with his name, with his work, that That's being right. out of the spotlight seems perfectly in keeping. Yeah. Can we yeah. can we start with? Um, I, I want to talk about him and uh, and the book here. Um, can we start maybe by talking about the social context, like this this idea of nineteen eighties South Korea? Yeah. When this book was first published, get, does a million copies. That's right. Uh, I think it's important to understand the context first. Yeah. yeah. What can you tell us about 1980s Korea, Harrison? Yeah. Well, so first of all, um, the fact that this book sold a million copies, um, this is phenomenal. No mm. no poetry book gets that kind of a- account these days. Right. Not even close. Not even close, right? I think 10,000 would be an amazing sale mm. uh, of a well-known poetry book. Um, so... 80s, ni- 1980 South Korea. Um, people are m- much poorer. And um, globalization, internetization has not set in. This mm. is the pre-Olympics period. Mm. Dictatorship is at its height. Mm. But the reading public may have been greater than today. The reading public. A poetry reading public. You know, so so this, is, this is the time when people would read on the buses, mm. waiting for the train, on the street, newspapers posted on the sidewalks, something like that, right? Mm. So, so yes, poorer, less connected, less secure, um, very tense dictatorship, probably at the height of South Korean dictatorship, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 1984, mid 1980s. But this is an odd time too, because because of the Olympics, mm. Um, Chun Duan during this time also kind of um, uh, lets go some of the sh- restrictions. So this is when professional baseball um, begins, for mm. example. Mm. This is also the kind of like the golden period of 1980s erotic movies. So on the one hand, dictatorship, Chun, Chun regime, um, very powerful, very penetrating. At the same time, there is some relaxation in the cultural realm. Um, so, so with things like, you know, um, comic books, sports, mm. um, erotic movies, 
Western movies coming in. So there are two, two different sides. Um, you know, at the same time, it is, a, it is a period of great deal of change. Students, students are at the vanguard of, of talking about society, um, also in the post-Kwangju uprising period. There is a certain awareness among the population of what, what democracy uh, should be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the students are at the forefront. Um, labor is also very much changing, the labor sector. Um, things like union, unionization. Um, some kind of a leftist consciousness is spreading rapidly uh, among the, the working class. Can I just ask um, very quickly, is students being at the forefront of a movement like that, is that global? Is that specific to East Asia? Is that, how does that work? Is that, yeah. is that common? It's global. Mm. It's global. You know, there's, there are, are um, a handful of cases. 1968, France, mm -hmm. um, Japan, 50s and 60s. Um, students are usually less controlled or less punished uh, than other groups by the government and the police. Usually, usually. Mm. So, and, and they, um, um, especially the ones who, who have a certain level of privilege and time mm. to study and learn various theories and ideas, um, um, they, um, there forms a sense of responsibility. And, and maybe, maybe South Korea was uh, one of the stronger cases in the world. You know, this, this notion that the student has a responsibility to society. Um, so, so uh, but you know, but, but this is the time when we first see national coalitions being formed. Students, farmers, workers, intellectuals, uh, women's groups, um, and you know, very low wage wage, wage workers, mm. low level wage workers are, are also kind of uniting and working with the students too. Um, and women are also at the center of the labor movement. So, 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 so pre-97, Min Jun Chong, KCTU, and these big unions mm -hmm. who kind of symbolize powerful protest today, um, um, uh, women, because there were so many of them working in the t textile industries and so forth, mm -hmm. were um, very often at the forefront. Uh, they, were, they were also um, another type of vanguards of, uh, of the labor mov movement. So, so um, in many ways, um, um, South Korea in the 80s were a little bit more dynamic mm. in some sense. Mm. Today, you know, uh, South Korea is, is, one, is rich, advanced technologically, you know, um, at the forefront, um, culturally, you know, I, I work at a university where, you know, um, Korea classes, K culture classes, mm -hmm. K anything classes are filled. Mm -hmm. F they get filled up. Mm -hmm. um, my university, we have, we have a big language program, and there are more Korean language students than Japanese students, which is amazing, right? Yes. So, so, so we live in this kind of place now. But 80 South Korea uh, might have been more dynamic more um, mm, uh, filled with possibilities, I think. And, um, and there's some, of, some of that has, has gone away. And also the sense of community um, and depending on each other, relying on each other, and mm -hmm. um, people engaging physically with each other uh, in, in the everyday sense. I think, I think that has in many ways uh, withered to, to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, so we're richer today, mm -hmm. but the 80s also wa was a watershed moment where we some some, some, some different types of energy um, in, in society, and Park Nohe represents that. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. G1, when you think of the 80s, does anything come to mind? <laughs> Obviously, this is way before your time. <laughs> I'm just curious, like, the images or... I just searching about 80s and the labors. Yeah. The image of me is like a dark and yeah. it's not a good 
for laborers or students because yeah. they have uh, not have the even chance That's to right. yeah. every students and and the the Yongdungpo mm-hmm. is the different yes. difference in these times mm-hmm. like they have some oh my the boat small boat and these times they have some mo- many buildings and every every generation is walking around the street but the that I saw the image is like some not a rural thing just some rural things mm. oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah Yongdungpo is, is yeah. an interesting place Yongdungpo Guro Garibong that area was you know one of the first um, industrial complexes mm. in the in the, in the Seoul metro millions of um, low-wage working people uh, living and working um, but also kind of creating their own awareness about the world mm-hmm. um, yeah it was so, so it was uh, it's a very different place I just drove through that place yesterday <laughs> and Times time square in yeah. now, oh isn't my, it? that's right that's <laughs> yeah. right yeah so so um, so when um, so uh, Minju no Chong mm-hmm. at one time had their headquarters in Yongdungpo Okay, it's, it's such a symbolic place. Yeah, yeah. 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 D- I remember first arriving and seeing Yongdungpo, and there would be this Times Square, and, and opposite that, there would be this huge red light district mm. as well, which was incredibly it's visible. Still there? Yeah. No, it's gone. Yeah. I believe. Oh, it's okay, completely okay. Gone, okay. Which is okay. really interesting to see yeah. the yeah. Gentrifi- gentrification or something, because the red light district is visibly gone because of the lights, because of the system. But there would be things I think that are not. <laughs> We're not aware that they're gone. Yeah. They would have changed. Yeah. Can I give you behind one? the streets? Um, yeah. um, behind the streets, uh, there's still some there. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Yongdungpo Kuro, mm-hmm. that area mm-hmm. still retains yeah. that old image of small shops, small metalworking factories, small gear um, machine factories, and mm-hmm. stuff. So I think there's a few hundred still there today. But in the 80s, thousands, thousands, wow. and big factories also um, taking. Um, their their uh, roots there as well. Yeah, it must have been a louder, smellier, noisier place, probably. rougher. Probably. I would imagine just the eighties in general in South Korea. Yeah, yeah, mm. probably, probably. You know, you know, but um, maybe maybe the numbers don't lie, or we also have that kind of sensibility today. Mm. So, um, so we think the working. Conditions are better today, and it, it probably is. It probably is, you know. Um, but the irregular working people, the number, mm. uh, has actually gone up. Mm-hmm. So short-term contract workers, um, overall, that number has now gone up to about fifty percent. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe being a short-term contract worker today is better mm. than being in a small factory shop worker in the eighties, probably. Probably right, but the precarious situation of um, the working class, mm. where you know your future is not guaranteed, that condition has not changed. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. has not changed. Yeah. Uh, are you aware of the app? I think it's called Kupku. Kupku. Yeah, Kupku oh, wow. is like uh, you know this. This no. is an app where people are going and choosing to do one day's work at Gimpo Airport and then the next day's work at a coffee shop in Chongda and they get paid like Shiman per day rather than working in a convenience store yeah. or a coffee shop regular yeah. they become emergency workers like pinch hitters wow. and they just and that's what they're choosing to do because there's more money in it and um, corporations and these a- these entities they use this app well, I'm not sure. I know young people use this app. Wow. I know a lot of my students are cuckoo uh-huh. on this app. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a thing, right? So, so, you know, so if you have a family here mm. and, and if you, you know, and you belong to the middle class and you go to a university <laughs> and kupku, um, getting paid a day to, 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 to work at, at a, at the airport or, mm. or something like that, that, that's not so bad. Mm. That's not so bad. Right. Because, you know, you, you spending money, spending money and you still belong to this kind of a safe Lots of sa- safety network yeah. um, mm-hmm. in that kind of uh, s- situation, you know. But if kupku becomes like your only means of survival, um, I think that's a different matter. And for 
for many, um, it seems like that is becoming the case. Mm. Yeah, it's but it's like the Insta stories last for 24 hours and then disappear, and wow. the contacts are fleeting, and the dating is like yeah. where we used to marry somebody yeah. and live with them for 40 years, and we have this one car for yeah. this long and one job. I think yeah. life is becoming a little bit more fleeting, temporary, and these yes. kind of things. It's a change. Yeah. Can you say something about yeah. the politics of the 80s, Harrison? Because you said about sort of left wing yeah. ideas coming in. I think if we can to try to understand what was the politics of South Korea in 1980s and how, to, because I think it's really important for, for Park no Hye's work. Yes. What's going on with politics? Yes. So um, it is still a, a very tense time with North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, this this uh, north south tension and conflict. Uh, it is always what it is always a clear source of of um, uh, policy, government oppression, and general curtailment of freedoms in South Korea because it is constantly there, and the government can always evoke that to kind of um, tighten its its grips in society. Very quickly, can I tell you one story that broke my heart this weekend? Yeah, my brother-in-law who's Lieutenant Colonel in the Korean Army, all weekend he was looking forward to his game of golf on Sunday. On Saturday, he was watching LG oh, Twins practicing his swing yeah. over Soju. He was talking about it. They were going yeah. to Yongin. He was so excited. Yeah. He gets a call 6 a.m. in the morning. There North Korea sending these balloons. You've got to come to work. <laughs> That's right. And I was just heartbroken for him because yeah. this is a South Korean man whose life is just at the beck and call of this situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a reality. And, you know, and... Um, uh, whether the balloons are actually threatening or not, um, they have to take these precautions. Mm. And the whole, the whole military sector is on emergency call, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, no, I, I hear you. As soon as I arrived, I uh, heard about the Omur uh, Pungsan. <laughs> How would you, yeah, got the <laughs> rubbish balloons, yeah. right? Yeah. Filled with filled with poo yeah. sometimes, right? Yeah, that's what they say. Um, mostly seems like paper, yes. um, paper waste, but my goodness. What's, it's just what's, like doing your what's recycling. Happening? Is <laughs> what's happening? Do, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, right? It seems like it's a very, very poorly <laughs> um, um, carried out campaign from the nor northern side as well. You know, not even, you know, um, pamphlets, vida, right? <laughs> just <laughs> rubbish. Well, anyhow, so, so, um, um, so it is at the height of um, dictatorship. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so that is kind of combined with anti-communism, right? It, this is a this is a, a moment of national growth. Mm -hmm. National growth in South Korea that is tied to, uh, you know, um, alliances with the United States, Japan, of course, right? Mm -hmm. And South Korea emerging as as, as uh, the frontier of um, um, liberal capitalist world in, in, in Asia. Mm. Um, and North Korea um, during this time is um, also kind of still maybe a leading voice in the post-colonial socialist world. Mm -hmm. um, Kim Il-sung is still very much alive and, and powerful. And Pyongyang, during this time, for example, um, is emerging as a model socialist city. So the Pyongyang that we know today was uh, constructed during this time, mm -hmm. in the throughout the 80s. Um, so, and uh, you know, from a certain angle, North Korea is doing just as good as South Korea, mm -hmm. economically, socially, militarily. You know. Um, South Korea with Gwangju still reeling from the Gwangju uprising. Um, there's a lot of uncertain elements. Um, but of course, with the Olympics, um, things are changing, mm. maybe temporarily. Um, so culturally, um, at the university level, um, uh, people have a little bit more freedom. Um, and uh, this is the moment where we actually see a blooming of leftist thought, student demonstrations, um, and um, someone like Park Nohe, 1984. There were 
other poets th- during this time. Ki- also, Kim Ji Ha is mm-hmm. also very active during this time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then uh, in 1989, um, during this brief moment of, of kind of a space of freedom, Park No Hae and his close um, friend um, Pek Tae Ung and others, they form San o Meng, the mm-hmm. Socialist Workers Alliance of South Korea. Uh, it's a public organization mm-hmm. called Socialist Workers Alliance. Uh, this emerges in in 1989. It's a dangerous name in South Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Even today, I, I think you will be a, a dangerous name, yeah. right? I, you know, you yeah. would. It will be a disservice if you would decide to call your organization something socialist. I was worried about telling some people I'm doing Park No Hair because they'll look at me <laughs> funny and they'll be like, you Park in there. That's right, that's right. You, that's right. Especially you uh, who um, uh, work in the classrooms, right? Could yeah. you say something about what leftist ideas are? So you've said that leftist ideas were yeah. coming in. You've mentioned the word socialist. Yeah. Perhaps can you try to, what does that mean? What, does, what are leftist ideas? Because at the time yeah. it wasn't, I'm going to be very flippant and facetious, but it wasn't about pronouns and ethnicity then, was it? It would have been different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, Pang Noe's, um, uh, his poems maybe is a good place where you can get a, a sense of what leftist socialist meant during this time. Mm-hmm. So so it it's not necessarily tied to Marxism or Leninism. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, also not 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 Stalinism. And clearly it cannot be closely associated with North Korea. Mm-hmm. So even Pang Noe, um, he does not mention um, um, North Korea or or unification um, which is different from people like Huang Zhou Gyeong or who have that more deep association. Yeah, country, right? yeah, and, and that comes a little bit later, a mm, li- okay. little bit later. Uh, but in the early 1980s, um, leftist movement um, um, largely involves things things like national unity, um, the ordinary people, mm. um, kind of coming together, um, educating ourselves learning about the world, and of course, um, the working class. Um, small factory, low wage workers, farmers, beginning to unite and demand very basic things like a union. Mm. So unionization is a big leftist program among the working class. It's not learning about Marx. It's not learning about you know, um, um, uh, global revolutions. You know, it's very often basic fundamental things like unionization um, at the shop floor, um, um, becoming better compatriots Mm -hmm. for each other, Mm -hmm. becoming aware about things like gender, uh, gender inequality, gender imbalance. So feminism I- is also an important part, and and Park Noe is 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 uh, so is is so beautiful in that respect. Um, his his uh, his early works kind of demonstrates his strong sense of um, feminism, um, and and um, and his poems also um, launched um, many people and and many thoughts within the movement too. You know you know I. Um, um, people who read, for example, while I mend my bedding, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, about a a, a husband who um, who's thinking about her uh, his uh, wife, who's working just as much, just as hard, just as long, mm-hmm. but then, you know, he's kind of reflecting on himself, um, how he still demands her to cook, clean, and uh, be be his kind of a domestic servant. And he's regretful about this while he's cleaning the house, um, while he's um, mending the 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 uh, ibr, mm. the bedding, and you know, and um, he, he realized that you know his wife is not a servant but mm. a, a true partner, a true comrade, you know, and uh, mm. and um, people were were blown away by by poems like this. Mm. Um, you know, usually union leaders, labor movement leaders, student leaders 
um, are are males, um, men. Even e- even to this day, all this is changing, especially in the climate justice mo- movement. And very often, the the same gender inequality, uh, gender stereotypes were reproduced in the movement sector. Um, and um, and Pang Noe is clearly aware of this, mm-hmm. and and he's talking about this. Yeah, this would have been a time when. Chip Saram was still a an, an affectionate term, sort of house person. Oh my! F- I, I still hear that today. Oh sometimes a little bit, but yeah, yeah. different time. Do you want when you when you read Nodong and Sebyok? Did you get an idea of gender when you read the one about Ebul, or how did it feel to you? I didn't get it about gender problem or gender issues, mm-hmm. but I saw that his wife are kind of very very most powerful woman in his poem mm. because but he leaned on his his wife and he comfortable feeling about that he, his wife in his house and there is my comfortable house mm. and I feel about that yeah yeah um, yeah yeah that's that's an that's a good observation his wife, the wife in his poems, it's not clear whose wife that is, actually. Mm. It's, um, you know, but uh, it's the wife, the partner is source of comfort, but um, she is also more than that. She is also a um, compatriot. Mm. She's also someone he, or the... Um, person fights with you know but alongside alongside together mm. you know Park Noe is also remarkable because he his some of his poems are from the perspective of a of a woman yes wasn't that isn't that very odd yes I, I, right? I had to stop and think when I was reading that I was like hang on what's uh, yeah. I had to go back and check that I was reading the yeah. right thing he yeah. switched pers- amazing yeah who does yeah that? So um, he has a, uh, a poem called Record of My Journey with Men. Mm. And, um, you know, you know, I think we all I think all men should should read a poem. <laughs> you know, um, it makes us feel very small and feeble. You know, you know, Park Noe is is talking about how much men have um, um, instrumentalized the gender and um, um, in many ways, h- how much um, um, social oppression happened through relationship, um, men and women, um, when men and women's r- relationships. And um, in that poem, mm. uh, you read through, you understand through her voice what, what a true masculinity should be, mm-hmm. what a true masculinity should be. And... Um, and you know, it's not something that that is still very idealized today, right? It is it is someone who is strong and sensitive, yeah, right? Who is understanding, empathetic, right? I mean, and there has to be a complete sense of equality, mm-hmm. complete sense of equality, and you know, and you know, it, that's not we're not all like that today, no, you know, and um, um, and I think. Poems like that, and also the dream of an apprentice, for example, mm. kind of makes you see this kind of uh, uh, the position that he puts women workers, um, you know, at at this level where um, we can learn from, uh, we can be, uh, you know, equal partners with, um, yeah. To do that today, I I think people would be cynical and call it sort of tokenism or identity politics. It's putting certain people in Netflix yeah. things. Do you see what I yeah. mean by that? It's, yeah. it's become cheapened, the discussion about identity and gender. Yeah. But to have done that in 1984, yeah. to have written poems from a woman's perspective and yeah. to have that, yeah. I thought was very impressive because he's, yeah. he's, he's not doing it for status. Yeah. He's not That's doing right. it for, you know... Uh, to look good. It yeah. feels like he's genu- genuinely yeah. doing it to represent people. Yeah. But at the same time, some poems are very masculine. And they talk about some are masculine. genitals and breasts and That's sex right. and, and drinking and smoking. Yes. It, it's not as if it's devoid 
of masculinity. Yeah. It's just including of femininity at the same time, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. You you mentioned um, before uh, our recording that you find some of his poems humorous, funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's absolutely I there. That so so that so that. Um, that strange but the strong sense of masculine world of mm -hmm. factory workers, um, it's always there because that's the source of laughter. It, it's also his source of criticizing um, uh, the situation and the context, mm -hmm. like uh, the bar wagon, pojang macha. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. th this group of men after work, they still have to come back the next day, but they have the evening off, not. Not the next day off. Yeah. They just have that evening off, yeah. right? So they get roaring drunk at a pojang macha, and they're talking about marriage, sex, you know, um, uh, you know, um, and uh, their past, their glorious past. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Sounds like so bed drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then leads a <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. Right. And then um, and then they also come back to the realization that. Um, uh, they have to come back the next day. Um, they have to be. They still have to be responsible people mm. uh, in the world and so forth. So, so, um, so that that sense of um, you know that um, masculine world, and um, that is also an important place for him, because that's where the change needs to happen. Mm. That's where that's where uh, brotherhood can lead to some kind of revolutionary action mm -hmm. and uh, many poems kind of speak to that yeah. so so there is that side of Pak Nohe where he is speaking in a world that is still heteronormative mm -hmm. you know there's no LGBT issues going on here not at all not at all so it's either um, hetero man or a hetero woman and their relationship right Mm -hmm. So it's uh, brothers and sisters, and men and women, and um, there's there's not and, and nothing between, yeah. right? So so in that respect, I mean, Pak Noe is still kind of working within this classical framework of feminism, mm -hmm. very very important, yeah, very important, um, but nevertheless, gender issue is so important for him. Mm -hmm. You know, this is 1984, and and he was 27 years old. Wow! And yet, you know, um, he he saw that many of the actual leaders of the labor movement were were women, mm -hmm. um, and um, and he's also realizing that uh, women um, are indeed true partners in this in this movement. So so he's so he's he's talking about both sides. Yeah. 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 And that shows you, I think, also how the book resonates still today and how important it is, because it gave me the perspective to to see and think through a woman's eyes in yeah. terms of heteronormativity. This yeah. is South Korea today. Yeah. One of my students, we discussed LGBT a few weeks ago, right? Yes. LGBTQ. And one of my students said to the whole class when she saw that that was the title on the on the e-class, on the online system, she thought it was a new version of ChatGPT. Oh, wow. That's how wow. kind of where some South Korean people <laughs> yeah. are at the moment. Yeah, They're like, yeah, what's yeah. that? They, yeah. they don't understand pronouns. Yeah. That's not a thing for them. There's no no understanding of cultural appropriation. When she saw LGBT, she said, I thought it was a new chat GPT. Wow. That was where she was. She wow. thought she was going to get help. Yeah. Do you hey, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, though, that you're doing this in the classroom. Well, yeah, you have to just to see what they think. Yeah. And to hear their voices. Yeah. Um, of course, yeah. the uh, LGBTQ movement is growing here, yeah. and um, uh, this whole Pride um, parade is is uh, it's something that gets bigger every time. Yeah, and 150, you know, fifty thousand, I think, uh, last week. Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, it, w it was last week, right? And and almost every campus now has an LGBTQ organization and so yeah. forth. Um, you know, always surprising though. In the media, they are still not a visible voice. Whereas... No one's out. 
in South Korea. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, on, on the wall up here, I can see Freddie Mercury and then yeah. you think of George Michael, yeah. you think of Stephen Fry, Graham Norton. I grew up with people out all around me and, and, and Britain didn't legalize gay marriage till like 2016. Yeah. So it's, it's less than a decade. Yeah. But we had these celebrities who were not- Elton John. Elton John, you could keep going. Samantha Fox, um, of Sir course. Ian McKellen. That's right. right. You That's could right. go on and on. But they came out before society was kind of ready for it. And yeah. they, they weren't famous for being gay. Yeah. They yeah. were famous because they were just That's genuinely right. amazing. That's right. Uh, and so yeah. I think there's a lack of representation sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, so even at that level of identity politics, mm. South Korea, while the LGBTQ movement is strong mm. and, um, and in society, I, I think people are a lot more used to it. But at the public level, yeah. it is still very much of an unheard. I heard this first, I think, from Todd Henry. Yeah. Um, that Seoul has more gay bars than New York. Oh my goodness! He he'd be the one to know, and um, um, he took me he took me to a, f a few of them. I've been to a few. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but maybe the history the history is clearly there. In the, since the post-war period and... Yeah. Or it shows yeah. you that in this place you need, it's like a ghettoization of politics. It's where in your daily life you don't see gay oh, people. Oh, right. It's they're in Chongno Samga, they're in Itaewon, yeah. they're in Sinchon. And so yeah. if you're in New York and you're gay, you just go to a normal bar. That's right. Whereas here right. it's, you're yeah. sort of out of sight, and out it, of and, mind. And it's a concentration in these neighborhoods. Yeah. There's a concentration. Which gives them safety and community. That's not a bad thing, but yeah. Yeah. less visible in society. Yeah. I want to try to get this question to you, dear one, which is going to be a, a really <laughs> hard question, I think. But this is talking about like socialism and sawejui. These are the words we've mentioned. Do you and your friends ever talk about politics these days? Do you ever like, how do you feel about the word socialism? Because these are like strong buzzwords in in France or in England or especially in the United States. Is politics a thing for you and your friends? Is socialism I, a scary word or? A I think it's the biggest difference of that Korea and this Korea. Hmm. If my friends talking about politics or in news things, yeah. we have to oh, stop. Oh, this is <laughs> yeah, not our yeah. question. This is not our subject. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So this is some sensitive things mm. to me, and I'm not sure about the politics and about mm. the global politics. So this is my. It it's because I'm not sure about this thing subjects, yeah. and yeah. if I say something in the subjects, I'm worried about is become a some more biggest problem yeah well uh, let me ask you this so things like socialism or feminism or um undong movement something like that um it's not because you guys are afraid to talk about these things right yeah it's it's just that it's just not um it's not so useful or yeah, yeah. so relevant i'm not to used you. to that and yeah or which is it because are you are you guys still afraid to talk about socialism not about afraid, no. but in my case, I'm not, I'm not good at some conversation, and I don't like nonzeng. So I just talking about the past things and the mm -hmm. sure things, yeah. just yeah. some like yeah. definition things. Yeah. Yeah. So in this politics, it's like some complicated, complicated. complicated. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I th I think there is a difference um, in the 80s, you know, maybe even throughout the 90s. Socialism, people were still afraid to talk about socialism mm. openly. Yeah, it must have been. As a positive, viable idea. You know, you, you, you only talk about socialism to bash North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, but not in a positive light, not in a viable, possible future. Um, I think today... It doesn't matter. It's not. It's it. Oh, mm -hmm. It almost feels irrelevant and and useless to talk yeah. about movements and, and socialism. Mm. While while South Korea, because of you know um, our you know oh. um, generations before us, South Korea has enjoys many socialistic <laughs> systems. Right, P perhaps the best in the world. Healthcare is amazing. It seems wow. Oh my, you know you're. Um, Nobody steals your stuff in a coffee shop. You walk the streets <laughs> late at night. Right? Yeah. You know, uh, you're a Brit, and um, you, I am. you you come from a.
place where the subway is one of the biggest and oldest in the world. Yeah. But here in South Korea, it is still 1,500 won, yeah. right, for, for one way. So transportation is, is ridiculously cheap mm-hmm. in South Korea. Mm. Um, and clean and, and clean. available and, and res- toilets. My American students like, well, yeah. there's toilets there. <laughs> yeah. And there's no rats. There's no graffiti. Yeah. And people are quiet. Yeah. yeah. Medicine, still incredibly cheap. Yeah. Medical care, ubiquitous and cheap. Mm. You know, th- you know, these things are all kind of uh, a socialistic systems that uh, our generations bef- before us have have um, fought for. Mm. Um, mm. Pension, which is one of the more important things in a leftist um, policy, is kind of weak here. Pension mm. yeah. is v- very weak in South Korea, but um, things like tuition too. Tuition still mm. kind of affordable in. In South Korea, although that's changing, that's Trish changing. Spent five million a semester, something like that. Obeng man one per semester, roughly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, compared to other <laughs> advanced countries, <laughs> it is still very low. Yeah. You know, I come from a place where, <laughs> oh my goodness, e- the the middle class cannot afford university without going into debt. You know, so there's a wonderful documentary by a uh, Iteung Gam Doknim. He mm. does these kind of like modern Korea things yeah. uh, on KBS. He works for KBS. Okay. And he did one on um Pal Pal Olympic, but it's basically just a social exploration and it has that um that Korea song that's mentioned in the books and poems oh, here. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, that song. Yeah. Uh, that's all featured in there. But in that documentary yeah. that uh, that has archived Daily's Anjang footage Kayo. He, there's a piece in there which says during the 1980s 80 percent of the people believed themselves to be middle class uh-huh. and this is doing newspaper statistics and things sure, like this sure, and sure, it was sure. this idea that um i sometimes understand middle class and you'll say this is a horrible description david from your labor but middle class is people that see a future yeah and that if they have yeah. one bedroom and a motorbike their yeah. kids might have two bedrooms and a car yeah that there's putting down roots and yeah. it's not living day to day or something like this and it yeah. felt like the 80s the future was still alive yeah the, and, and that's why people were sacrificing and doing things yeah and at the moment we've heard g1's uh, opinion and I, I i find it resonates with so many people y2k vibes and retro and and that's really popular today because the future is very like jesus christ right the, right. The the Y2K, the, the 90s, 2000s, that's set. Yeah. It's not complicated. It's yeah. safe. Yeah. When we watch The Matrix, Harrison, yeah. my students. Yeah. You you, sh- you show that in the classroom? That's that's awesome. I thought they were <laughs> going to start getting like the, the Jesus illusions and the Plato's cave and yeah. all this. And they, yeah. they, they said this to me. Keanu Reeves is so handsome and I like the outfits. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I love all four said. movies. This I is love what they all said. four. Yeah. All these students, yeah. young adult women unprompted and without me suggesting it said i'd take the blue pill and stay in the matrix oh my oh my that's what they said yeah and they said it unasked yeah. multiple people and i was like yeah. oh wow right and I, I wanted part of me wanted to grip them and shake right. them but then i also had to step back and go yeah that's kind of interesting yeah yeah don't want to know the truth just give yeah. me the fantasy yeah mm. yeah you know you know from from a certain marxist perspective of um, total subsumption under capitalism we have already taken the blue pill mm. we have already yeah so so you know we are all um, uh, by choice um, if you can call it that by choice choosing to live in this world of uh, spectacles yeah so absolutely so um, yeah yeah amazing it, it was a different time the 1980s yeah and it was um, this idea, y- you were talking about the color blue, which I'd never mm. even considered in the sky. And it was it was Brother Anthony that told me this is about hope. Because yeah. when you read this book, yeah. this Dawn of Labor, part of me wanted to cry. And it's, yeah. it, it's, it's wow, really. Right. And it's like, it's almost like grief tourism. Yeah. yeah. Read about the struggles of some people and, yeah. and get some empathy, God damn it. Yeah. But then so, Brother Anthony yeah. and then G1, and perhaps you can say, they told me, no, this is about hope. Yeah, right. So um, it begins with Dawn of Labor. You know, if we can go into the poem itself. Yeah, let's do it. Please. Dawn of Labor um, begins with this situation where uh, the worker is finally getting off from work at dawn. 
because he has to work the night shift. Mm. Um, so very often these night shift or extended shifts were mandatory. Meant, you know, which meant, you know, if you don't work this, then you could get fired. So uh, after the night shift, uh, when you get off work, um, it's already dawn. Mm-hmm. It's already dawn. Mm-hmm. So, so it's that beautiful scene where the worker gets off work and um, drinks soju. 새벽에. 새벽에. Mm-hmm. He's drinking soju early in the morning, right, to kind of calm his nerves, you know, so he can relax a little bit. Um, but that moment is also the moment of clarity and a symbol for maybe a maybe a different future. So mm-hmm. this is all happening at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it is speaking about this dire situation mm-hmm. where um, you know the, the, the morning is is a time of exhaustion and stress because you're just getting off work. Um, but at the same time, with soju. Uh, you are also feeling a sense of relief, clarity, thought, and and, and maybe some kind of vision about the future. Mm-hmm. So in that mm-hmm. sense, um, hopelessness that changes into uh, hope. A new yeah. day is coming. That's right. Dawn. Yeah, mm. that's right. There's and Bob Dylan lyric in there somewhere, <laughs> isn't yeah, there? There we go. There we go. Uh, early Bob Dylan, of course. And and um, um, Park Noe is always thinking about this um, uh, in in a kind of uh, from the position of um, inevitability, kind of like in the Matrix. Mm. You know, it is inevitable that we fight. It is inevitable that we must rise together. Uh, because we're we're starving and we're dying, mm. so it's either a a gruesome death um, or awakening, mm-hmm. and um, and uh, there's no choice in this kind of situation. So so in a in a kind of um, uh, dramatic fashion, Park Noe is talking about the dawn, the so-called dawn, as a moment of inevitability. Mm-hmm. Where the worker, where the workers must come together or simply perish. So, so hey, the matrix analogy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it's the moment of taking the red pill. Park Neo. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> for saying that. I'm sorry, but he, he's got the long hair like Keanu a little bit. I'm not sure if he did at the and time. And the beard. And, and the, the beard. beard. Yeah. 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 The illusion's coming. Would it be? Would it be good? Can we? Can we read a couple of the poems? Because I think we're talking about them, but I think sometimes yeah. we need to bring them alive. Yeah. yeah. Is there one that you would like to read? Oh, oh, may I? You cold? Yeah. A little. Yeah, I thought yeah. my nunchi is working. <laughs> Let me turn that off for a while. Yeah, but m- may I do that in in Korean or in or in English? Um, whichever you prefer. Which yeah. w- what what do you want to do? Um, I'm going to read one in English. Maybe do one. You might read one. In, but you do you. Yeah. Hey, who's your um who's your audience? English speaking. Generally English speaking. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but can I? you you do what you want to do. Yeah. You know, so I I love every single. Of these poems, I mean, you know, um, it was a labor of love, um, translating every each word, each line. But maybe, maybe I, maybe I'll, I'll read in English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I, can I borrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Which one are you going to read? I'm going to read um, the poem called Love. Can mm-hmm. you find love in yeah. Korean? Yeah. First sarang, two. sarang, and um, so. I like that. It, it, G1's got this <laughs> underlined. And oh, oh, did you like that? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah. could work if you read like parts of it and yeah. then she'll read mm. the Korean and we can. Oh, should we do that? Okay. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Love. Love is sorrow, heart rending grief. Love is fury, utter hatred. Love is wailing, writhing, covered in blood. Love is separation. A clear separation toward unity. Love is pain, dreadful pain. Love is action, concrete action. Ma- yeah, maybe I'll I'll stop here and if you uh, want to kind of yeah. 사, 사랑, 사랑은 슬픔, 가슴 미어지는 피해. 사랑은 분노, 철저한 증오. 사랑은 통곡, 피투성이의 몸부림. 
사랑은 갈라섬 일치를 향한 확연한 갈라섬 사랑은 고통, 참혹한 고통 사랑은 실천, 구체적인 실천 I like this very much this, I like it more now you guys are reading yeah. 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 Love is labor The dull, aching path of the worker Love is taking oneself apart Melting into history And being reborn as multitude Love is cruel A cold decision Love is struggle Merciless struggle Love is maelstrom The oceans, mountains, fields And the sky awaking Storm and lightning Thrashing and roaring Being reborn The color of blood 사랑은 노동 지루하고 괴로운 노동자의 길 사랑은 자기를 해체하는 것 우리가 되어 역사 속에 녹아들어 소생하는 것 사랑은 잔인한 것 냉혹한 결단 사랑은 투쟁 무자비한 투쟁 사랑은 회오리 온 바다와 산과 들과 하늘이 들고 일어서 폭풍치고 번개치며 포효하여 피피치로 새로이 나는 것 In the end, love is a peaceful shining sea A blue sky with sunlight pouring down All living things becoming one On verdant, dew-soaked land A dazzling new day filled with song and dance A wondrous conception 그리하여 마침내 사랑은 고요의 빛나는 바다 햇살 쏟아지는 파란 하늘 이슬 머금은 푸른 대지 위에 생명 있는 모든 것들 하나이 되어 춤추며 노래하는 눈부신 새날의 위대한 잉태 It's amazing that you've chosen that one which is so beautiful which is so hopeful There's the line in there 사랑은 노도 Yeah It sounds yeah. very Love is labor but Yeah What a beautiful uplifting way of looking at life considering the dire circumstances in which it would have been written and to the people whom it was perhaps addressed yeah yeah oh i completely agree and you know he and and um um true love long-term love um you know it's not easy no you know you're a you're a family man mm. and so am i and uh it takes it is a struggle it's, it's, it's an active it's like exercise or something or paying yeah. your taxes yeah it's yeah and very often it is political yeah um and you know it it ver- very often shakes our fundamental core all the time mm. right come on come on you know i mean you know our our partners you know my my partner uh always is someone who is able to shake my core challenge my core and you know and i appreciate that um maybe moments later mm. i always appreciate it later mm. but you know every day you know there is struggle um constant right patience mm-hmm. empathy yeah. um and uh, it 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 involves the world in many ways um so i you know i like this poem very much <laughs> that's uh it's nice to get a new look at it and it's nice to see which ones we immediately go to okay, uh, okay. which ones we gravitate towards and okay which one did you okay oh, yeah. no, i, I like them all like? actually rather than one single poem i found yeah. myself looking at various little lines but i think probably we should try to read how much oh i like that one oh um, my. just because it's it, it's so Oh my. It's something. Can I, I I mean these are your words. Sure. Can yeah, we do it this yeah. way again? Do you May can I? you, oh, can you I like find that one? one? It's Oh my. Oh, my daddy. Daddy. This this little poem is uh, has um, okay, okay. has bits of very painful South Korean history too. So it, it does yeah. and I thought it con- it contrasts really nicely with yeah. Sarang. Love. Yeah. Yeah. I love hearing you guys read it as well. Yeah. It's a lesson. Okay, um should I st- start? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Let's flip it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How about yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. 얼마짜리지? 말더듬이 염색공 사촌형은 10년 퇴직금을 중동 취업 브로커에게 털리고 나서 자살을 했다. 돈 100만 원이면 아파 누우신 우리 엄마 병원을 가고 29 노천을 누나 꽃가말 탄다. 돈 1000만 원이면 내가 10년을 꼬박 벌어야 한다. My stuttering cousin, the dyer, lost 10 years of severance pay to a swindler, 
promising a job in the Middle East, so he killed himself. One million one is the cost of my sick mother's visit to the hospital, the cost of a wedding for my 29-year-old spinterish sister. Ten million won is how much I would make in ten years. 1억 원은 두번 태어나 발버둥 쳐도 엄두도 나지 않는 강 건너 산 넘어 무지개이다. 나의 인생은 일당 4천 원짜리. 그대 인생은 얼마? 우리 사장님은 하룻밤 술값이 100만 원이랬는데 강아지 하루 식대가 5천 원이랬는데 3천억을 쥐고 흔든 여장부도 있다는데. A hundred million won is a distant rainbow, many rivers and hills away, something I can't imagine if I worked two lifetimes. My life is worth 4,000 won a day. How much are you worth? They say my boss spends a million won on an evening's drinks. They say his dog food costs 5,000 won a day. They say there is a woman who reigns over 300 billion won. 염색공 사촌형은 120만 원에 자살을 하고 열여섯 누리 동생 공장을 가고 오 우리 인생 우리의 사랑 우리의 생명은 얼마 얼마 My cousin the dyer kills himself over 1 million 200,000 won My little brother goes to the factory at the age of 16 My oh my our life our love our existence how much are we worth how much Pure capitalism, isn't it? Yeah. I, yeah. I learned a new word recently. I might pronounce this incorrectly. Um, Tanagwe? Tanagwe. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? What is this word? It's Interesting. Ta is a uh, tabunjui. Tabunjui. Kwe is kwemul. Yes. What's the na? Naun. Ah, it's the hmm? become. Coming uh, of. Yeah, coming yeah. of. Capitalism. capitalism monster. Tanagwe. Ah. Oh. This is a term that's used, and it's like you've become a capitalist. It's the monster of capitalism. Mm. This is a common, like, sinjo, new word. So it refers to a person or a, a system? Like a money. Mm -hmm. Money. It depends on money. Like But when would you call, would you call your sajangnim? Yeah. Uh, or would you say when you're buying something? When would you use that term? Like, my mother said, me, said to me, 내가 이거 사줄게. Mm -hmm. And I do everything. Yeah. <laughs> like this system. Yeah, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. Monster of capitalism. Yeah. Sounds like a Netflix documentary yeah. <laughs> or something. You know, so so that poem, I mean, yeah. you know, and and today we, we use also things like, terms like, um, 금수저, 흑수저, you know, but it, it, that, that Gold kind of... Gold spoon. Yeah, yeah. I think that is still so relevant. Yeah. So relevant today. And this... This uh, the um, um, you know the the cousin, the stuttering cousin, the dyer, mm. Mm. you know who um, kills himself with this promise of uh, going to the Middle East, and and I think there's something to that, you know, um, um, going abroad for work, or people from abroad coming here for work, mm -hmm. um, and you know with this and. Uh, extreme levels of inequality um, that is present here. So that that poem, I love that poem very much. It's still very much um, true, I think. Um, yeah. And and the the um, the leisure and the luxury that the uh, wealthy class um, enjoys today, mm. you know, mm. you know, in many ways, It's the elite wealthy class and their culture that often represents a country, mm -hmm. very often, mm -hmm. you know, especially South Korea. Fancy restaurants and cafes and museums, um, you know, which we all love, which we all enjoy, mm -hmm. right, um, occasionally. If we can be used to them, yeah. sometimes they make people feel uncomfortable yeah. because they're quiet. Yeah. There's a real yeah. difference when you go to upper class things, they're quiet and they smell less. Yeah. When you go to lower class things, they're noisy and yeah. they're, they're, it's yeah. different, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know, the cost is um, unthinkable for yep. many, many in South Korea. Yeah. yeah. So, so you talk about this 잔하게 and 
and so forth. So he has a poem called Amani. It's a short poem too. Yeah. Um, and um, I love that poem. It's a very sad poem. He doesn't like his mother almost. Yeah. And that's yeah. completely against like hyodo yeah. filial piety. Exactly. But he's, wow. Exactly. Yeah. So, so his his love is there, but he's also criticizing her yeah. because she also becomes a tiny capitalist oppressor. Yeah. You know, um, uh, through her love, through her love and her wish for her, her son to be in a comfortable position with a comfortable job with a with a stable family and a decent house that's all she wants right this kind of yeah. pure innocent um, wish mm. but of course for for the for the person of in the poem the protagonist that is also the very oppressive ideology of mm. capitalism mm. and corporations and the bosses so yeah, exactly. So she, she acquiesced to the system, didn't she? Absolutely, and she, and and um, the protagonist is pointing that out. Because I love you, I have to do this. Because even you are ideologically kind of <laughs> manipulated within this yeah. structure. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's like how powerful. people complain about the hardships and st still send their kids to hug ones and things <laughs> like this know, and you know, know. it's we're, we're all contributing to I that know. system i know so you know i mean i don't we don't know if Park noe really read marxist theory leftist theory too much mm. you know i um but instinctively mm. um this is these are some of the things that he saw even yeah. family family is the first place of um oppression maybe mm -hmm. and, and ideological um education like gender like gender inequality mm -hmm. for example yeah starts within the family so chale and jesa and those things oh yeah oh yeah uh, right. i'm talking about ancestor worship yeah 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 so so um that 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 small short poem omni he is kind of tearing down tearing down this ideology of of mother yeah because the mother's through their love, can reproduce, regenerate the oppressive ideology, and uh, it's a very um, sad, sad poem in in that respect. I'm going to read some of Mother, and then I yeah. want to try to talk about why he got arrested. This man was given a death <laughs> sentence and put in jail. No, he. That's right. This wasn't That's like. Right grandstanding for social media clout his yeah. work got him arrested got him put in jail yeah. calls for death penalty yeah. and in the footage that i saw as yeah. he was being led yeah. through the courts by authorities he was smiling yes and there are some people that you meet and they just have an aura they have a vibe yeah. they you know it radiates off them yeah. and when i saw that footage of him yeah. i was like wow look at this man yeah he, he, he he's it's glow remarkable. yeah he, remarkable yeah. even yeah. in such a dire situation yeah um let's let's read mother and complete this trilogy yes under the blazing sun of meager may and june on the island of namdo as you crawled the furrows of the field clutching a hoe i suckled at your shriveled breasts taking in the soft and rich food the meat and rice that ought to have gone into your body i grew up by draining my mother's body like a spider. 남도의 허기진 5뉴얼 대학별 날에 호미를 쥐고 밭고랑을 기던 당신 품에서 말라붙은 젖을 빨며 당신 몸으로 갈고기 한 점, 쌀밥 한 술, 연하고 기름진 것을 받아 먹으며 거미처럼 제 어미 몸을 파먹으며 자랐습니다. I was raised on gruel of foxtail grass which often made me dizzy. Then I thrashed as a worker full of grief for having had no schooling, but I never turned to stealing. I never caused people harm, never lived idly. If there is one person in this world to whom I brought sorrow, it was you, mother. 독새풀 죽 수어 먹고 어지럽 속에 커도 못 배워 한 많은 노동자로 몸부림쳐도 도둑질은 하지 않았습니다. 일안 하고 놀고 먹지도 남을 괴롭히지도 않았습니다. 나로 하여 이 세상에서 단 하나 슬픔을 준 사람이 있다면 어머니 바로 당신입니다. Your one wish in life was to have a peaceful family. Even if we had few possessions, I worked hard, made fair demands, fought with good conscience for our better days. 
As the struggle deepened and hardship raged more fiercely, you grew more apprehensive, sinking into greater resignation, embracing, pleading and reproaching. Mother, you are over 60 but still work as a housekeeper. Your desire is the dream of all of us. Because we are poor and had no schooling, because we have dark grief from humiliation and scorn, your desire for a peaceful family is an indeed an earnest prayer by us all. 당신의 오직 하나 소원이라면 가진 것 적어도 오손도손 평온한 가, 가정이겠지요. 저는 열심히 일했고 떳떳하게 요구했고 양심대로 우리들의 새 날을 위해 싸웠습니다. 투쟁이 깊어갈수록 우리에겐 풍파가 몰아쳤고 당신은 더 불안하고 체념 속에 주저앉아 다시 나를 붙들고 애원하면 원망합니다. 어머니, 환갑이 넘어서도 파출부살이를 하는 당신의 염원은 우리 모두의 꿈입니다. 가난했기에 못 배웠기에 수모와 천대와 노동의 시퍼런 한 맺혔기에 오손도손 평온한 가정의 바램은 마땅한 우리 모두의 비원입니다. Oh mother, within you is our enemy. Those who cruelly trample on your desire and hope for a peaceful family life lurk cunningly inside your prayers like a poisonous snake of subservience and selfishness, of greed and indolence, and with the steady, persistent tongue of a vicious enemy, they burrow into our weakest humanity to tempt us. Oh, 어머니, 당신 속엔 우리의 적이 있습니다. 어머니의 염원을, 오손도손 평온한 가정의 바램을 잔혹하게 짓밟고 선 저들은 간교하게도 당신의 비원 속에 굴종과 이기주의와 탐욕과 안일의 독사로 도사리며 간악한 적의 가장 집요하고 공고한 혓바닥으로 우리의 가장 약한 인륜을 파고들며 유혹합니다. Born into this world, I drive a nail into your heart, the heart of the only person I call mother. For the sake of your earnest wish, for the prayers of all mothers on this land, to regain the happiness that has been stolen and smeared, today we become wayward children and set off to the battleground in tears, leaving your side. 이 세상에 태어나 단한 사람, 어머니의 가슴에 목을 박습니다. 어머님의 간절한 소원을 위하여, 이 땅의 모든 어머니들의 비원을 위하여, 짓눌리고 빼앗긴 행복을 되찾기 위해, 오늘 우리는 불효자가 되어 저 참혹한 싸움터로 울며 울며 당신 곁을 떠나갑니다. Embracing your tears of blood as well as grief, we promise to replace them with love and pious affection. Bloodied in battles to obtain our precious peace, the flags of victory will flutter on high, and we shall come home with shining faces and meet you with our heads to the ground. But until that day, mother, we are the most wayward children under heaven. To cut out the enemy's tongue lurking inside you, to sever with cold hostility, with true love for you, mother, we become the most wayward and awful children under heaven, and head out for the battleground. Shedding tears of blood, mother, mother. 어머님의 피눈물과 원한을 품고서 기필코 사랑과 효성으로 돌려드리고의 말, 우리들의 소중한 평화를 쟁취하고자 피투성의 싸움 속에서 승리의 깃발을 드높이 펄럭이며 빛나는 얼굴로 돌아와 큰 절을 올리는 그날까지 어머님, 우리는 천하의 불효자입니다. 당신 속에 도사린 적의 혓바닥을. 냉혹하게 적대적으로 끊어버리는 진실로 어머니를 사랑하옵는 천하의 몹쓸 불효자가 되어 피눈물을 흘리며 싸움터로 나아갑니다. 어머니, 어머니. Mm, love that. You guys read that so well. Oh my. It's nice having two voices, two yeah. languages, I think. Yeah. To oh, do it this justice. This is fantastic. This is fantastic. I, I yeah. like this kind of dual. 진짜 잘 읽으시네요. <웃음> 저도 <웃음> 그렇게 생각해요. 그리고 yeah. 목소리 톤은 yeah. 완전. Yeah. Have you ever heard you too, David, ha- Hang Gang very speak? Nice. Han- no. Oh, no. Your voice sounds very good. <laughs> <laughs> when uh-huh. I hear your voice, I've, it, it's very softly spoken. Yeah. This is religious, isn't it? The, the, oh. the poisonous snake tempting in the garden, the nails yeah. being driven, yeah. the blood. Yes. Um, I come with a sword and uh, yes. to, to come to me, you have to cut off your family. Yes. It's, it's religious, isn't it? It so, feels to me. So um, this is not... Um, um, publicized too much but of course you know people know but um, he comes from a Catholic family mm-hmm. and his older brother is is actually a Catholic priest I didn't know okay um, and uh, his uh, he has a sister he's one of five he has a sister who's um, who's also a who's also someone in the cloak 
Um, so, oh yeah, deeply religious mm. family. Mm. Um, and he himself, I believe, is very spiritual. He's a spiritual person as well. Mm. Um, now, he, 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 I don't think he openly talks about Catholicism in his poems. I don't think he does, or God, or, 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 or in any kind of in a uh, faith-based way. Mm. Unlike, say, like Chun Sang Byung or something like that, you know, he, in his poems, he talks about God, mm -hmm. right, right. But he, in a very innocent way. But that, that kind of religious um, salvation is not in his book. But a lot of imagery that is very biblical mm. in many ways. Snakes. Um, water, oh, the ocean is everywhere. The ocean is everywhere. Mm. Um, the temptations and uh, and the nails. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's yeah. I, I feel that. Yeah. In this one, yeah. all three poems remarkably different. One yes. about one about dawn, one about hope and love. That's right. Uh, That's and, right. And, and, yeah. and one about the capitalist system turning us into machines yeah. and then this one about the family yeah you know i yeah. worried that reading a collection of poems you might um tire and we just chose these three quite randomly we didn't yeah. plan to read these three as we did <laughs> yeah but they show the diversity of what he brings to life and i think you know in science fiction or something you talk about world building or something but he does this by yeah talking about all aspects of life yeah Yes, yes, he does. So, so, um, so even from something like mother and love, very emotional, mm. spiritual, right? Break. And then, and then um, there's something like Samcheong re-education camp, yeah. Samcheong Kyuyukwan, where it's so brutal and so cruel. Mm. Um, but even within that, you know, he is showing strength the spirit the, the human spirit the people who are revolting mm. who are fighting struggling um, even while getting himself getting themselves killed you know that mm. one last revolt that one last resistance a against authority um, um, and it's kind of talked about in this in a way that is um, uh, um, like a, it's a moment of salvation. Mm -hmm. So through their death, mm -hmm. and in Samcheon Gyuk Te, you know, one person goes up on a hill and uh, blows blows himself up, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. or gets blown up. Um, um, so, and of course, at that moment, that person is not just a meaningless victim but some kind of a martyr, some mm -hmm. kind of a, a symbol, um, and a, a, a small slice of strength against authoritarianism. Mm -hmm. A Jesus figure, maybe? Could be. Could be, right? On the hill, yeah. you know? Um, so, um, so even when this kind of really grim and cruel situation, there is this moment of salvation, too that he um, brings out. Samcheon Gyukde, oh my, is yeah. such a powerful, detailed um, mm -hmm. um, piece of um, work. And the reality, and a reality that maybe Park Noh himself would, would come to experience. Can I ask you to talk about his, do you know anything about his arrest, his, his torture, his imprisonment, yeah. the, the, that part of his life? Yeah. Because I, uh, the, yeah. the real consequences of writing a book we're talking about it today. What are we like? Forty years later, yeah. yeah. And 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 we're heralding him. Yeah. And we're, we're lauding him. But the immediate result, apart from the million copies sold, was imprisonment and possible death That's for right. writing a book. That's right. So he was in prison for seven years and six months. Wow. And most of the time, wow. most of the time, David, solitary confinement. Yeah. So. Um, he the 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 trauma of that period I think still resonates today. Must do. His poems do change. Mm. So from Dawn of Labor, this is before you know uh, Sano Meng and prison time, and during prison and after prison, um, they do kind of change. You know, 
um, so uh, contextually um, talk about topics of uh, unionization or the street physical fighting mm-hmm. you know um, this kind of violent uprising that is inevitable mm-hmm. that disappears that that disappears and um, he is more concerned with the world which becomes a very important place and individual reawakening individual rea- reawakening mm-hmm. um, and of course I mean you know of course um, um, the the most important um, object becomes uh, the individual mm-hmm. you know, there can be you could go to the protest from the group to the individual I guess yeah. that change you mean yeah right you can belong to a community mm-hmm. you can be in a um, you can be you can follow orders um, you know you can read and study but if if it does if the change does not come from the within mm-hmm. then um, then he sees no point so his his power his words his 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 vision becomes inward but also very much outward too because he's also talking about the world and his scope um, um, goes beyond the Korean context as well he went to the world didn't he absolutely absolutely so I've seen his photos from Palestine and Iraq yeah, and yeah. so uh, the Palestine fo- um, uh, photos photography is still going on now mm-hmm. at, 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 at his gallery the rock I went there last month yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 um, what a timing right when he was doing it before it was a thing, though. Yeah. Which is, he was talking about gender before it was a thing. He was yeah. talking about Palestine before yeah. some people could find it on a map, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. He's ahead of his time. Yeah. He is. He is. So, you know, he's, he's uh, telling us that, um, you know, while we enjoy our rich, uh, you know, sophisticated lives, you know, we cannot forget mm-hmm. that there are many different worlds. Um, and many people who are, you know, who continue to live in poverty and violence, but of course, but always with the sense of hope. You know, he's he's always talking about that. Yeah. As well. Um, and movement. Yeah. And walking and, and journeying. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Seven years looking at a wall. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. Imagine what I did. It That's right. Breaks me just to even consider to yeah. contemplate solitary yeah. confinement. Yeah. With a wolf. So, um, so, in the beginning, it was um, um, execution. Yeah. And then it was um, um, just uh, imprisonment without parole, and then um, seven years uh, after release. So y- there was a time when, when he thought he would spend the rest of his life mm. in. In prison, so it was Pang uh, Nohae on on the one hand, and his partner Pek Taeung uh, on the other. They were both imprisoned, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, um, and serving five, six years, five, six, seven years. Um, and I know I got to know I got to know Pak Nohae through his poems and from his team. Yeah, and I got to know Pek Taeung as well, the other founding member of Sanomeng. Mm-hmm. And um, the prison time um, really changed them, you know. But their, but their, hu- th- but their spirit, mm-hmm. it is still, mm-hmm. still there. Yeah. And um, these two are I- amazing individuals. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a what what I see of Park Naho posted by his team. Park Naho posted today. There's not a there's not a malice. There's not an aggression. There's still a hope. There's yeah. still that that thing. He was. Pardoned under Kim Dae Jung. I just want to try to get at how he came. It was Kim Dae Jung that pardoned him, or not quite sure. I believe so. Sounds about right. Yeah, Kim Young Sam. Oh, Kim, Kim Young Sam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. yeah, yeah. That's the important of Korean democracy. Were yeah. these were these pictures in the original? So I'm just looking at your copy in, in the right. English version that's been published. Uh, yeah. It's in sections, three sections. That's right. It, I believe. Yeah. But th- there are these wonderful. Um, Yes. So, yeah. So, illustrations. Um, um, at the beginning of the yeah. book, sure. there is the original cover. Um, so this is the original cover from the first mm. edition. Yeah. And 
um, and also the image of the 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 worker image of the worker is also um, embedded throughout the um, throughout the sections yeah so um, they're they're signi significant as well so the original cover is a copy of a wood carving um, mm. and the wood carving is done by it's it's um, it was done by the renowned artist wood carving artist o yun o yun he was also a leftist artist painter a revolutionary person himself part of the people's art movement um it wasn't called minjung yezra at the time mm. but but still very much part of the the movement circle movement activist um artist circle he died very young mm -hmm. he died very young but um he uh, was um, uh, a close friend of Pang Nohe, and uh, when his, um, poet, his first collection came out, um, he wanted to use Oyun's wood carving. And um, when this version was coming out, um, the English version was coming out, Pang Nohe's team reached out to his family again, mm. Oyun's family, and um, of course, received permission to use that imagery on the cover um, as well. That's so, lovely. Yeah. So um, uh, a piece of Oyun, um, the intention is to uh, to still bring in a mm. piece of Oyun as we as it uh, as the first edition did in 1984. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the artistic world, Oyun was kind of like Pang Nohe. Mm. Um, nice. So they are still together. Here it, after forty years, that's that's a beautiful part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you amazing stuff. But yeah. you know what? I, if you look at his um, um, artworks, I think you would you would recognize some of them because his since his death, his artworks have become really familiar, and his style mm. his style has mm. become quite popular. It's this kind of a tubakan thick lines kind of crude okay, yeah, crude yeah, lines uh, of of um uh, people laughing and crying in pain but in joy it's um and in many ways he kind of launched this kind of a, a style rep representing um, mm -hmm. the, the movement um artist sector yeah i feel that sometimes in modern life we want instant rewards and success and yeah. you know with oyun with park no hair sometimes yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's not the way it works, is it? Sometimes yeah. you have to lay down roots and seeds of things that are going to... They may not even grow, yeah. but if they are going to, it's going to take time yeah. for people to see them. Yeah. Um, do you want you, you said something about the color blue mm. to me, which I never picked, but this really? was your vibe. That's totally fine. Tell us about blue. Because I like the blue color, and when I was a high school student, mm. I... Some did some on artwork, art project in my art class. Mm. That thing is about Juan Miro, Juan mm, Miro's yeah, blue, yeah. blue series, mm. and then compare with the Alice in Wonderland uh -huh. because they Alice also express like blue things. But he, she always wear blue dress. Oh, that's right. Back yeah. to Matrix and blues and reds. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So I concluded the two two things to blue is all blue is expressed the dream and some childhood innocence mm -hmm. so i think this title is sebak mm -hmm. and also blue is some um, his dream and his childhood innocence so yeah is a uh, passed by but it's also in his mind mm -hmm. And it's like hope things because in France the national nation flag also used the uh, this blue. Mm -hmm. It's also called uh, freedom, mm -hmm. and it's a rare color about the past Western. Yeah, it's also mm -hmm. blue dye. Yeah, it's a rare thing. So I think these all things come through in this blue cover yeah. so i think blue is mm -hmm. express the freedom dream hope mm -hmm. and childhood mm -hmm. innocence 
Oh, I think you're absolutely right. <laughs> you're a very visual person. This is what I know from you. But very yeah. visual person. Yeah. And it's not so red. It's not red. It's not the yeah. it's also not democracy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Democracy. Yeah. Well, red is usually the color that represents the left yeah. and the revolution. North Korea. Oh, it's associated. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but um, um, but as you as you point out, I I think uh, blue was intentionally chosen even with that version too. Yeah. So that's the second um, edition of mm -hmm. Lodong Ezebio, um as exactly that um, dawn, um, uh, uh, something new, something ho hopeful. Mm -hmm. One thing that Park Noe's team and Park Noe did not want is to put his face on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you know. So, so we are we are in the heyday of um, translation literature. Uh, Korean translations yeah. are sought after. They are enjoyed throughout the world, you know, and and very often, um, the publishers abroad they want the author's face, mm -hmm. you know, because you to know prove they're Korean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look at this Asian person. Right, <laughs> their Asianness, and yeah. um, mm -hmm. and um, in order to get different audiences to be aware and for them to you know, win awards um, and to be invited to, to big conferences, mm -hmm. people have to know how they look like. Mm -hmm. So so there was an idea of putting his face um, on the cover. But of course, um, um, this was not their, how they wanted to go. No. This is not how they wanted to go. So there is a photo in the back. There, there is, is a photo in the yeah. back. Um, but, um, Yep, yep. As as one time he was known as the faceless poet, I think that's something that he still wants to maintain, especially with Dawn of Labor. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, you know, I can talk about this a little bit. So, in a way, he wants Dawn of Labor to be known to the world. Um, and he's very interested in, in how... Um, the English-speaking audience uh, receives this this collection. At the same time, he is very cautious about commercialization, mm -hmm. marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so everything is controlled, everything is organized, and um, uh, by by us. So we we don't have a separate marketing team. Mm -hmm. Um, everything is, is controlled and, and uh, decided among us. Um, so, in a way, although this is a big translation project, um, it, it is very different from, say, someone like Han Gang or Hwang Seo Gyeong, mm -hmm. um, because they are not. Park Noe is, is is intentionally avoiding the commercial book landscape mm -hmm. you know and um, what's the reason for that you know that's a good question that's a good question because you might like I, I'm not sure that that's a good question right asking. yeah you know because you know I think as a as an author you you would want fame mm. success recognition um, and you know, Hwang Seo Gyeong was just shortlisted for the Booker Prize mm. for his um, recent novel, um, Cheolto and Samdae, for example. Yeah. Right? And of course, I mean, Han Gang is becoming a um, very celebrated. I well, like both their works. Yeah, great books. Yeah, um, Park Noe, in many ways, is doing things in his own way. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the kind of uh, this this mainstream literary recognition, I think he's okay if he if he's not um, received in the same way. And then first of all, it's it's poetry, mm -hmm. so it we know it is not going to um, be treated in the same way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, so so we know what we're working with, first of all, but at the same time. Um, you know, he came to Hawaii. He uh, he and his team approached the University of Hawaii Press um, through Pak You know, 
Pek Taeyong, his um, his old friend, mm. is a professor there mm. um, uh, in the School of Law as a human rights lawyer. He became a human rights lawyer, mm. left South Korea, and eventually um, settled in in Hawaii. Um, you know, and he approached a university press, uh, not you know a commercial press. Um, so there is some limitation, of course. Mm -hmm. There is limitation. Um, you know, but as his uh, the first one edition became so popular through word of mouth and and through underground circles and so forth, I think um, I think his his big I think his his main wish is for people to enjoy and to be and to be able to access. Um, the poems and not necessarily awards or mm. you know yeah fancy recognitions the book has to find the right people at the right time not be thrust onto them by an algorithm or something perhaps when it's yeah when you need the book it will be there or yeah. when you yeah um, because it, it's maybe I'm not sure is, is it common to read poetry these days I mean oh I'm my. always reading so I'm yeah. not quite sure I have yeah. a very curious like uh, academic yeah. perspective but is poetry reading a thing yeah i don't think so to read is poetry reading a thing no i, I yeah. like to reading a poetry but yeah it's not a thing <laughs> <laughs> still a yeah. thing yeah. yeah right i think i think still um the classroom maybe it's short poem though yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah 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 no i think i think classrooms are still maybe one of the few places where mm. poems are used yeah mm. as because it's a because it's a very effective teaching tool because they're so short <laughs> yeah. yeah right you don't right. have to assign a whole novel that's it it's just a right um but outside that david oh my do we read poetry these days <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know i was yeah i was only familiar because i i saw his poems in other academic works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know uh, excerpts, yep. bits and pieces. Um, so you know, e you know, and I and I spend a lot of time reading because of my work, mm. you know. But whew, I mean, fiction, movies, you know. I think movies have become so mm. global and ubiqu ubiquitous and accessible. Mm. Mm. It seems like that that has become the main artistic, right, um, medium. Movies and dramas, yeah, um, the parasites, the Squid Games, absolutely, things like this, absolutely, yeah. right. Mm. Um, but poetry, it's still a very, very niche. Yeah, yeah. I asked one of my more. students, "Do you know Park No And he said, "Yes." And I said, "Wow, that's amazing." And then he said, "Because you showed us one of his poems in week three. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, "There we go." Well, I, at least David, I'm, that's, I, I, I'm doing something. That's about amazing. It. That, that's amazing that you were doing this. The poem is uh, maybe. Oh, the poem maybe. Yeah, I, I have yeah. that when I talk about the the miracle yeah. on the Han River, yeah, uh, yeah. and things like this. But they are, they are short form and and they get something across. I think the maybe I'm a machine. Yes, yeah, maybe I'm a machine. Mm. Oh my. Yeah. Oh, are we gonna? Can we do another? It, it's it's basically just like <laughs> rage against the machine lyrics or something like yeah. this. It's 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 perfect for today. Yeah. Um, Maybe as we kind of bring this towards an end, like I want to know about the experience of reading this, yeah. Harrison, because you've translated it, yeah. and I and I just want to know what's it like for you, yeah, reading Park Noe because I think it's different for all three of us because we're different people. Yeah, what's it like reading? What do you yeah. get from this? How does yeah. it get you? Yeah, um, immediately. Because I'm I'm comfortable in both Korean and English. Immediately, I was struck by the the mastery of Park Noe's use of the Korean language. Um, he's so natural. Mm -hmm. He's so natural at talking about subject matter that are that could be seen as 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 very. Um, um, inflexible or hard or kind of very often cheesy things like love right mm. sentimental or something that people don't want to hear too much or like unions but he's able to make these things into an art form and I so I so I thought that was so beautiful 
Now translating, translating is is all about your struggle with your own um, predilections, your your habit of going to cliches. So um, you know, I've done a few translation works. This is my first poetry. Um, I, I I do academic translations, um, and um, and so forth. But it was another a big moment of exercise where. I knew I had to tear down my own um, preconceived notions about language, mm. you know. So, so you know, I I do I think I do believe that language shapes our consciousness, uh, which comes first. And it, it, I'm I'm on the side of I'm on the side of language. What do you mean by this? Language shapes our consciousness. Um, that 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 human consciousness is. Um, shaped comes from our interactions with language and and symbols so that with that so so there is to me i i don't know i i believe less on this pure consciousness that exists mm. within and then we use language to express uh, i'm more on the side of of language being how we are conditioned to think, you know, it's it's a big big old debate. It's and a Sapir Whorf hypothesis and things like this, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and you know, I'm not I'm not so um, um, well spoken in that debate, but generally, I'm I'm someone who um, believes in the primacy of of language. So so at this time, although I was aware that like la- so much our language habits are cliches. You know what I mean? Yeah. That is why it takes a lot of exercise to get rid of our cliched writing, get that, flush that away to get to your own ideas and so forth. You know, but I mean, is there truly an original idea? I don't know. I don't know. But working on this book once again made me aware that I I really need to um, uh, flush away, tear apart my own preconceptions, preconceived notions about language. Mm. When you're translating especially, your first instance is to use idioms and cliches. Mm -hmm. It's very common. Mm -hmm. It's very common. And even the good ones still end up using cliches and idioms. And uh, but when you know that he doesn't, that the author doesn't, then it is your job to make sure that you don't just turn to cliches and idioms to to translate his works. It is very easy for translators to turn to already accepted, commonly accepted notions of phrases, terms, mm-hmm. and so forth. It is impossible to fully escape that, but um, um, Brother Anthony and I certainly try to do that. Um, and I think some areas we were successful. Some poems, even today, I go back and uh, it's like, oh, am I sure about this? Am I sure about this section? Why didn't you translate Tongbak? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> so, well, that, that word caused me so much grief, Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and sort of so, so one way that we got away, <laughs> a little bit easy, to simply um, create a glossary. And italicize and keep yeah. some words in Korean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah some yeah, some good. things untranslatable. Good. You know, we we tried Tongbak. Mm. Um, um, uh, we try to simply um, leave it Tongbak or to to change it. Let's see, Tongbak. Um, Street smarts, I think, is in the glossary. Yeah, I was like a. I was trying to explain it to G one as like a, the or like a street wisdom or something like this before. We yeah, started. becoming wise. Becoming so so wise, yeah. so the yeah. English poem is simply called becoming wise. But Tongbak is in in the so many times yeah. in the poem. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's it is. We we're at a point where where. Um, some some Korean words should be left 
Great. untranslated. And I think the world, you know, is should be okay with that, right? Because uh, you know, part of reading poetry from a different country is to also learn about that country as well. So, Tongbak. So we just left it in there. So, mm-hmm. so, so, so we try to do both: translate, but also leave them in there. Like Shida, apprentice, right? Mm-hmm. Shida mm-hmm. Uh, comes from. Originally a Japanese word, but becoming becoming a Koreanized word, meaning apprentice, for example, um, still used still used today. Stuck. Tongbak, not much used today, right? Yeah. Who who uses the word tongbak? <laughs> when I ask somebody, it looks a bit like this. Yeah. 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 Gulladaninen, uh, gulladaninen head, or something like that, mm-hmm. right? It it kind of um, and then you know, but the but the. Allegories and imagery uh, in their poem is 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 um, it's amazing. It's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. They're kicked around. They're these workers, precarious workers, kicked around from one factory to another factory, from street to street. They're just kicked around, mm-hmm. like you know, um, like a, like a can or or something like that, right? And then from that process of moving, rolling, bumping, clashing, they are also growing. Their head is is also growing. They're becoming more wise, mm-hmm. street wise, right? Yeah. I, I think I think that's a fine translation. That um, might be in the glossary. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then, <laughs> I then, won't take then, credit. Yeah. Then then yeah. I did I did write that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and then you know and then um, the workers who are in the beginning, in many ways fools, fools, and pawns, pawns in the game, uneducated masses. Um, especially compared to the elites, right, in the upper class. Uh, eventually, from their experience of being tossed out out in the street, mm-hmm. they they are becoming wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're coming together as this one giant head, right? One giant head. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> did did his team have anything to say about the English translation? But they I, they must have been receptive. I'm just curious how yeah. it was how it was yeah. received. Well, you know, at first, um, you know, they had no trust in me, of course, you know, because we didn't know each other, and you know, at, at, I'm just an academic. Uh, but Brother Anthony was there from the beginning. Brother Anthony, an academic with a history of like labor and and, and working socially. It, it's that must have helped you, mustn't it? I think so. No, I think so, and. Um, uh, so Brother Anthony had actually the first draft. It was a. It was necessarily a rough translation because his his poems are really hard to translate. Mm. Um, and then, when I came to the picture, um, and um, Brother Anthony knew about me, and of course, um, I'm also close colleagues with Pek Teung, mm. his old friend. Mm. Um, so that was that was how I got in. Mm-hmm. Into and into this circle and earn their trust. Um, otherwise, I think um, uh, immediately um, authors need to be kind of cautious about their about their translators. Absolutely, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So it was only because I I um, um, I had the support of Brother Anthony mm. and of course Pek Teung, mm. um, his old old friend and because and because of this trust i was able to um brother and i were able to really take everything apart and then and put them together Mm. and it and it needed that and it needed that you know um and it um and it was just an amazing life-changing experience must as it was for me reading it i can't imagine what it must have been like to be how long did it take so from you, how, how from the beginning process? to publication, three years. Wow, yeah, that's a, yeah. a long time to have this in your head, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Must feel so nice to to see. Oh, to, to, oh my! To, you know. True labor of love, you know, and and it, it all all the recognition goes to Pang Noe's team, and of course, Brother Anthony, um, you know, and um, to yourself. So you're allowed to take some credit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, you know, um, yeah. I mean, I am on the. University of Hawaii Press editorial board. Mm-hmm. So um, of course I I pushed this. <laughs> of course, with uh, yeah. using all my influence, yeah. I said, "Hey, we're getting this book out. Mm-hmm. We're getting this book out. I'm finding the money. We're getting it out." 
Um, so there was no cost uh, for the Korean side to publish this book. Wow. It was all handled by the University of Hawaii Press. Um, and um, Pek Taehyung said, hey, blank check for you, whatever you need. So this was, a, this was an expensive book because it took so long. Mm. Um, and longer it takes, um, the more it, right. it costs. But, um, you know, but we have three entities here, the Pang Noe's team, Brother mm. Anthony, and myself, mm. and, and we are all in many ways experts in our own ways. We have our own visions. So there were, there were a lot of clashes. There were a lot of clashes, right? Mm. Uh, because Give us we, an example of one clash. We want, um, for example, you know, uh, well, we wanted, um, um, uh, we wanted to create the best product. Mm -hmm. um, we can. So, but we have three different highly motivated groups. Um, okay, even the title, Dawn of Labor, um, it took some talking through. I, in the beginning, wanted to add the, the dawn, the dawn of labor. The dawn of labor. Mm -hmm. To me, that, that felt more precise, mm -hmm. emphasis on the dawn. Mm -hmm. um, There's a wry smile from you there. How yeah, is it? Like yeah. In, Shall I just write it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, I don't know, the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. The Matrix. The Matrix. Mm -hmm. So you the can. Alice in Wonder. No, I'm joking. So you can have the article the mm -hmm. and still make it a very effective um, title. Yeah. And it's short. The Matrix. Oh, my gosh. You know what? This Matrix an analysis <laughs> wor is working on many levels here. <laughs> Um, so I was insistent on the da. Yeah. Um, but who was it, Brother Anthony or Pak Brother Anthony was like, no, we don't need the da. We mm. don't need the da. You know. Mm. Of course, he's he's a master translator. Um, he is British. He's um, Korean as well. He's, he's also he's Korean. A Korean citizenship, isn't he? That's he's right. Like, he is uh, no longer uh, Han Sun Jae. Yeah, is um, um, a uh, Brit by. Yeah. Citizenship, you know, you know, but but I'm I'm also someone who, um, you know, I take pride in the fact that I, I am fluent in in both languages, and um, I'm al also someone who loves la the language itself. Mm. Um, so you know, there was some 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 difference right there, you Good. know, but but should be. but toward the end. Yeah. Um, Brother Anthony was right. Taking the da out, dawn of labor, sounded more fluent, easier on the tongue. The dawn, the two very similar sounding mm -hmm. words, right? Mm -hmm. In Korean, we'd be like da 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 right? So so um, you know we we took out the article. Uh, at the end, but there's a, there's a, I can't see it any other way now because I've seen it like this. Yeah, I've become right? accustomed to it. Yeah, yeah. there there is a nice symmetry of having the three. It the is. Play, it, it is it, three three words. Works. Yeah, it's a butterfly. Yeah, represents you, brother yeah. Anthony, and the team. Yeah. Park no Hair. Oh, there we go. Oh, thank you. I like that. I'm just trying to make you feel like better. That. I try to comfort yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Through this. Y yeah. Um, usually, though, in my mind, still dawn, dawn requires that article because it's you know the darkest hour is just before the dawn yeah you always use the dawn i was thinking of earlier you use yeah. you always use the before dawn yeah. right yeah unless he's talking about a woman her name is dawn there we go dawn. there we go she works there we go Hello, right dawn. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly david so 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 yeah i mean so so it's not simple no right it's not, it's not simple the, you, you know this very, very well because you deal with mm. international audiences, but C an article is, is often very hard. Can I say one thing before? I, Jiwon, I'm going to ask you about your experience of reading <laughs> this book, right? Because I'm curious what a, what a young Korean Gen Z did mm. through reading poetry. I just want to say about getting rid of stereotypes and cliches and because we often think 
in other people's words. And sometimes when I'm speaking to young people, I can almost hear them either reciting my lectures back to me or talking yeah. through what they've just heard on a podcast yeah. and things like this. Yes. And it was writing a weekly column in the newspaper, which I still do, but it took me about two years of writing every week. I read them. To, I, to I get, read them occasionally. To get They're very good. rid of the cliches and yeah. stereotypes, to, to find my voice. Absolutely. It, it's not something you can't tell somebody to stop doing it in stereotypes. It's almost like you have to get rid of it all. Yeah. You have to use them all yeah. until you strip away and there's nothing left yeah. but your voice, if yeah. there is a voice yeah. there. Yeah. But it was only through I think you're right. Immense yeah. labor. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I do it, no matter how hard it is to, to get to that. Thing. Yeah. Because we do we do repeat what we hear. Very, we're mimetic. Mm. We, we're monkeys. And yeah. We repeat what we yeah. see and hear. Well, uh, I got, let me just tell you right now that um, I know that uh, in North America, me and my colleagues, my Korean studies colleagues, we uh, very often enjoy your um, article, uh, your 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 column. Thank you. For oh, saying yeah. That. Yeah. That's why I focus sometimes on that more than academia, because I know it gets read, <laughs> yeah. which is yeah. an interesting thing. Speaking of things getting read, you had to read like, Yes. <laughs> which is beautiful. Honestly, what, what was this like for you? I like this point because it's not uh, many irony or autonomy. Oh. Just oh. like, realistic and I get it in the line line by line and and I like the some some sentence that I loved when you <laughs> saw her book by the way oh, look at that it's all yeah. you read it yeah. all I those dog ears yeah. I can read this yeah please 모래 위에 심은 꽃은 화창한 봄날에도 피지 않는다 it's like a beautiful sentence give us that in English oh. if you can uh, in your words Mm, in the spring days, the uh, <laughs> I can't. <tell> it. <laughs> it's not it's a so hard. This is why you have to respect Harris. How did I? How did I do it? Uh, w which is the poem? Parami <laughs> Turdoro. Oh, the stone in the oh, oh yeah, the yeah, 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 This poem. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Give us a second while we find it. What? Um, where is that in the, the stone in the wind? Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you may have to look at the... Yeah. The flowers... Yeah, there's the more part. The flowers planted in sand do not bloom even on sunny spring days. That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> That's a pretty straightforward translation. But, you know, but, you know, those, um, those simple lines are very often hard to translate. And I mean, I'm impressive that... The rhythm has to be there. The rhythm. And, yeah. This person is only 27 years old. Yeah. He has some spirit about the democracy and in his time mm. because I'm I said about the I'm not a spirit in the democracy or the politics in mm. very much like him. Yeah. So I respect him. He write the, he wrote these books in that yeah. dangerous time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. And I can some feeling about. This st sent sentence to 서둘지 말자 그러나 쉬지도 말자. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Because we have, we are not, we're not uh, very famous about politics or society, but we have to do. We thinking about we have to do something for my futures yeah. or my jobs or like this thing. So I yeah. keep feeling about this sentence. Oh, that's good. That's a good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good line. That's a good line. It's nice that it genuinely impact that you, you know, you read it and you went through it. The really interesting thing is that you didn't have to study it. Yeah. And you said there's no irony. It's not like you have to, we, as academics, we can go deep into imagery and symbolism. Uh, just reading, I just read it. Yeah, yeah. just for the yeah. simple, clear, direct message is, is yeah. quite an interesting take on it. Yes. That might be something as, to, as a way to communicate it to other generations. Yeah. Without the symbolism and the, yeah. the politics, it's just... And he didn't go like to college. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go to college. He was, um, he stopped formal education at the age of 16. Wow. Um. And he went to a night school and um, kind of learned things on his own. He truly an amazing. And person. here we are discussing his work yeah. and, and doing that. And 
we should be careful not to speak about him in the past tense and things like this, right? This is still a living, breathing oh, absolutely. Korean artist, which is, yes. which I think is really, really so cool about that, that, yes. you know, in a sense, it's still dawn. Yeah, I want to give you this book, his latest uh, book, wow. um, essays about his early life. Um, early life growing up in the countryside, um, how he uh, understood the world as a child. Um, I think this one just came out maybe, yeah. maybe two months ago. Yeah. The, the the flower tears of youth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Something like yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he oh, yeah. he calls himself that. He, he said that he used to cry a lot when he was a child. Yeah. <laughs> this is his father walking away. It, it appears maybe. to be on the front maybe. cover. Maybe. Yeah. 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 It's a wonderful gift. Uh, Harrison, thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you've done on this book. Thank you for, for you know, taking the time out of your day. This is dawn yeah. in modern capitalist South Korea, and you've trekked all the way across the city. Yes. Uh, to come and see me. No, so I'm genuinely appreciative of that because there, there's no money involved in any yeah. of this. It's just... Um, uh, I, was, I don't know the word commune ship or something like that yeah. so thank you yeah. um, a book a movie thank a song guys. any any recommendation this is something I've been asking my guests recently oh what's a it, yeah. it can be anything yeah but a book or a movie or a song okay what's, okay what's, give us something I'm um, ask you as well do you want <laughs> yeah um, academic book Hwasuk Nam Hwasuk Nam Hwasuk Nam um, came up with a book last year called Women in the Sky. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's uh, it's about the it's about South Korea's labor movement and um, and the amazing leadership of of women um, in uh, in the history of South Korea's labor movement. How they have always been at the forefront, but very often um, forgotten. It's an amazing book, um, academic book. Yes. Women in the Sky. A song. Can I recommend a song? No, please. Yes. Chun Ji-in. Chun Ji-in is um, kind of a movement band, late 80s, early 90s. Chun Ji-in. So, so people of, of the world, Chun mm. Ji-in. And the song is called Chun Ge Chun Pal Ga. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful song. Chun yeah, yeah, Pal Ga. Yeah. yeah. I will, yeah. Um, and you know, very often, I maybe once a week, I will play that song. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Uh, it, it's a great song. It's a great. Song. I mean, of course, I I love many um, so-called movement art uh, music, mm. um, beginning with Kim Mingi and Han mm. Dae and um, and Yang Hyun and Chung Tae Chun and and so forth. Um, but Chung Ge Chun Pal Ga is is beautiful. Nice. <laughs> Thank you for both of those. The book I've been meaning to read for a yeah. while. Thank you. Oh, this was great, David. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, space, mm -hmm. this chance to talk to you. Talk talk to you both. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want before we got a book, any anything, a, a song or a, um, a movie? What's cool? I can recommend the poetry. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite poet. Yeah. 사랑하라 한 번도 상처받지 않은 것처럼. Yeah, Who's the author? Liu Xihua. Liu Xihua. Liu Xihua. Ah. And you. some of my favorite books called Nudge. Everybody's Nudge. reading this. <laughs> Nudge? I haven't read it. Everybody I speak to, the young Koreans, I say, tell me what you're reading. It's Nudge. It's Nudge. called Nudge? Yeah. Nudge. Everyone's reading oh. it. I need to read it. <laughs> this is my one of my favorite books. Why is everyone reading it? <laughs> Who's the author? John... Uh, Nudge. Searching. Oh, okay. It's a translation. Okay. Why is everyone reading Nudge, do you want? Because uh, I'm interested about psychology and mm. neuroscience. Mm. So I started reading this book. And mm -hmm. this book had some many scientific ex experiments and some, some theories and... I don't know. I like this. Mm -hmm. Every book, single book. Mm -hmm. I like this book. Excellent. Thank you. The author is Richard Saylor. Richard, Richard Saylor. Saylor. Okay. okay. That's hugely popular at the moment. I, I, I'm not sure why, but among young Korean people, I hear that so many mm -hmm. times. What do, you, what do you recommend, David, um, for me to read or listen to? 
or watch. Oh wow! I, I wasn't expecting you to say that. <laughs> you are you are someone who is connected <laughs> to uh, many mm, many things. Um, I'll just. I don't know why this is. Have you read much Mark Fisher? Mm. No. Mark Fisher. Mm -mm. Mark Fisher's capitalist realism, mm -hmm. um, which starts with the line, "It's easier to imagine the the end of the world than the end of capitalism." Okay. This is right up your alley. Yeah. This is, it, it, and you read it in um, yeah. you read it in an hour. Uh -huh. It's a very small book. Um, uh -huh. I sometimes reckon I lent it to you, didn't I? Did I lend you capitalist oh, realism? Okay. Uh, liquid modernity. I lent you liquid modernity. That, that, in, that, that intro you just said is very uh, Fukuyama in kind of a start. But anyhow, yeah. It, no, it's all about that. It's about yeah. that the, there's no, there's nothing. Uh -huh. Like, I find this question really interesting. We'll close with this that, you know, sometimes people say to me that they're socialist uh, as if that's progressive. Mm -hmm. And I'm of the opinion that capitalism and socialism are so, like, they're centuries old and mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're creaking and. Where's the new one? Mm -hmm. Give if you are really progressive. Give me a new idea that I haven't heard of. Give mm -hmm. me something that hasn't been true because that's what progressive or, or modern means. And mm -hmm. I, I don't really, I find the com competition between these two ideologies to be, be very um, old fashioned. Mm -hmm. I'm the same with music. I'm like, I want to hear music that I hear and I go, Jesus Christ, what's that? Mm -hmm. I want something I don't understand. I want something that feels like. It's it's so new you don't get it. Yeah. There's an artist at the moment that's very big, uh, that I found very interesting. Her name is Chappelle Rowan. Do okay. you know her? No. Um, I forget the name of her album, but Chappelle Rowan's first album um, is incredible. It, it's got like Kate Bush vibes. Okay. And you're listen uh, you're listening to it, and uh, the first song I think is called like Phenem Feminine Omenon. It's like a combination of phenomenon. And feminine, mm. you listen to this music, and I'm like, it's gonna do that, and then it's gonna go there, and it's gonna go there, mm. and it's just this amazing artist. So, mm. Chappelle Rowan and uh, Mark Fisher. Yeah, gotcha. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. This was uh, Park No Hair. The, the book is Dawn of Labor, it's a translation of his poems. Go out and read it. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you, G1. Relax. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, all right. Thank, Thank you, David. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.